<laughs> testing, testing. All right. Non-resident training course, August 1994. Equipment operator, basic Navy trod, one four zero eight one. Chapter nine. All right, front end loaders and excavators and ditchers. Front end loaders, excavator, ditchers are used to support construction operations anytime there's need to lift, unload, clear, grub, excavate, trench, very variety of makes up the models of the United States Navy and Naval Naval Construction Force. Each operator is responsible for reading operators' manual to obtain detailed information about each model and model make and model. His chapter covers the general characteristic basic principle operation of front end loaders, excavators, and ditchers. Front end loaders. Front end loaders are self contaminated mounted rubber tire tracks and is one of the most versatile, capable on pieces of equipment used in the Navy naval construction force. The front end loader it can be yeah, equipped to operate a loader diesel a loader as a loader do, dozer, scraper, clamshell, forklift, backhoe, crane, auger, or sweeper. Alright, rubber tire front end loader. Mounted on large rubber tires, the front end loader has a relatively low ground pressure, um, bearing pressure approximately 45 pounds to enable it to perform a large variety of jobs. The rubber fire, uh, tire front end loader, figure 9 1, has three manual selected forward gear ranges that permit good mobility when traveling from on job site to another. The full power, the full power soft shift transmission on general gear range direction of travel it, it change at any time with a. <coughs> Without stopping the machine from maintaining a higher rate of production, the large rubber tires provide good tra traction. An unstable surface allow the front end loader to perform side slopes of up to 15% or on front slopes up to 30%. The hydraulic system gives the operator positive control over the front end loader attachments and steering system. The crawl mounted front end. Mounted on the crawl trackers, the crawl mounted front end loader has a low ground bearing that shows the rubber tire front end loader. That has enables to operate with the areas where wheel front end loaders can't go. The front end mounted front end loader in figure 9-2 lower speed than rubber tire front end loader. This decreases the immobility. However, a crawl mounted front end loader can be operated on side slopes up to 35% of on front slopes up to 60%. Hydraulic system provides positive control for the front end loader. The crawls and tracks on crawler tracks are normal semi grouse shoes. Figure 9-3 permit to work on firm ground and limited damage to surface. Attachments. Attachments contribute to the efficient performance of front end loaders. Some of the loaders used in naval construction force are procured with a bucket, forklift, backhoe, attachment, figure 9 for the attachments allow the front end. <coughs> okay, this shows the collar mounted front end loader. Semi grosser, semi -grosser shoe. Your uh, front end loader attachments, the forklift, the clamshell, and the uh, excavator um, shows the uh, attachment connection front and left front from left hand lock and pin quick disconnect in lock and pin front right hand boom arm left hand boom arm and then the other part of Loaders to be ideal piece of equipment for construction projects, saving the need for the numerous pieces of equipment that can be used elsewhere. Quick disconnecting hydraulic hose fittings, hydraulic controlled hocking pins permit these attachments to be chained as easy as shown in figure 9 5. Buckets. The two types of front end loader buckets are commonly used general purpose bucket and the multi segment bucket, known as the multi purpose form one bucket. The both types can be equipped with the crawler, rubber tire, wheel loaders. The general purpose bucket is a single piece of bucket constructed with a heavy duty, uh, a welded seal, bolted, welded receptacle cutting edges, all that attach on the bolt receptacle teeth, um, replaceable teeth, figure 9, nine 8, that allows the bucket to be used for excavation on medium to hard surface, hard materials. The multiple purpose form one bucket is also constructed a heavy duty or all welded steel, bolted or welded receptacle cutting edges. The bucket also has a bolt on receptacle teeth attached to provide excavation medium to hard materials. However, the multiple purpose four in one bucket has two piece construction that makes it more versatile. Show the figure nine six of so the general purpose bucket, and then your multiple purpose form one bucket. General purpose single bucket, for example, the multiple purpose form one bucket can be used as a clamshell, dozer, scraper, or skid shovel. Forklift attachment is useful for the tool remote the project site with unloading building material. Care must be taken to overload the loader when using forklift attachments. 
Figure 9-8 shows the bucket teeth, the shank, and the tooth tip, the locking pin, and the pin lock. Note, a loader equipped with a fill, um, fill lift attachment must be operated using soft te same techniques, operation, safety rules designed for forklifts. Backo. Backo attachment is a positive digging tool used to big, dig below the ground. Such trenches, combat fighting positions, building footers, and foundations. Backo is attached to the loader frame with a rigid coupling. The hydraulics uses quick disconnecting coupling to ha tap the, hydro the loader hydraulic system for poor power source. Operating techniques. When operating a loader equipped with a skid bucket, keep it at engine speed at full throttle. Operate in first or second gear transmission range. Use second and third gear for traveling. Start all jobs from nearly level ground if possible. When necessary, level any or large area enough to provide sufficient workplace for the loader. This step prevents the up-down pitching of the loader. Figure 9-9 results a smoother digging operation. Figure 9-9 shows the up and down pitching of the loader or on, on irregular terrain. Track and wheel spinning should be avoided with loaded tires or expensive excessive spinning of the tires while loading it causes premature wear and tire. Additionally, it converts smoother working area into runs that pitch and tilt the loader. A smooth working area is safer, more comfortable, if and always puts less wear and tear on the machine and yourself. Therefore, productions increase. Cross ditches, ridge rocks, log, log slowly, if impossible, at an angle. The pro procedure slow the fall, lessening with the damaging upside and loader, reducing the jolt of the fall, and when the clock can harm both the operator and the loader. A uniform system hand signals may be used at all front end loaders. While, while, while authority of the given signals must be assigned to only one person under the normal work conditions, the responsibility of giving emergency stop signals to anyone and the Vasani who believes in such a signal is necessary. The person given the signal must be clearly visible to the operator at all times. Hand signals used at front end loaders are shown in Appendix 4. Note, when you recognize and understand these signals operating equipment, additionally, you must also give them what when called to act as a single man during an air equipment operation. Your automatic bucket lever. The um, 515B series dresser rubber tire front end loader uses the Navy Construction Force having automatic bucket lever located underside of the bucket cylinder figure 10-2. Ten, sorry, 910. Automatic bucket lever. One is your trip bar. Two is the proximity switch. The automatic bucket lever is pressed on preset to stop the bucket horizontal digging position. Trip bar is attached and moved to the cylinder rod. The proximity switch creates a magnetic field circuit that is completed by the proximity trip bar within, within magnetic field. Once the bucket is done, place the bucket lever in the bucket roll back position. When the bucket reaches preset position, the trip bar moves on the magnetic field created, circuit created by the proximity switch automatic stops. Then the bucket, the bucket control lever returns to the hold position. Refer to the manufacturer's operator's manual for automatic bucket lever needs and adjustments. Position indicator. The general purpose of the bucket shown in figure 9-6 is normally used as a skid shovel. The multiple purpose on bucket shown in figure 9-7 serves as a skid shovel, but also can be used as a bulldozer, scraper, clamshell. Most front end loaders are equipped with a sick bucket control levers by such as raise, hold, lower, float, dump, and roll back. Dump roll back can be used at the same time with any four position any of the other four positions. Also, most of the loaders have position indicators, depth gauge indicator mounted on the bucket. To multiple purpose attachment of the operator pulls the control lever back in the 911 until the clamshell indicates it's in the O setting on the clam product graphic. Figure 912. To set the multiple purpose back at a scraper, you open the clamshell indicator points two, and four, or 2 or 4 on the clam product graphic 913. The more clamshell is open, the deeper cut it can be made. The use of the multiple purpose bucket is a dozer. You open the, cl you open the clamshell until the clamshell indicator is at the bottom of the clam product graphic 914. All right, 911 shows the multiple purpose. Uh, a is your multiple purpose bucket control. Two is the, B is the bucket control lever. C is the boom control lever, and D is the front of the machine. All right, 912, multiple purpose bucket and set bucket position. All right, that would be uh, zero, two, four, and zero, four, and then it, then it shows 913 multiple purpose set and scraper. Second and two, two out of four, and then four A would be the multiple purpose set set as a dozer. So you have your bucket, um, scraper, and dozer. 
Figure 915 shows the dozer blade in tilt position. Figure 916 shows the multiple burst clamshell position. Figure 917 shows ramp construction for below, for below ground over excavation. Figure 918 shows the V method of loading. All right, the blade is done with the tilting blade forward, backward, shown in 915. To use the multiple purpose bag at clamshell, you open the clamshell until the clamshell indicators at the bottom of 916. Then you tilt the bucket forward all the way. Note, multiple purpose bucket positions indicators differ depending on the manufacturer. Read the operator's manual type loader you are assigned to operate. Figure 919 shows the step loading method. Loader operator. The front end loader can dig excavation such as building foundation and other below ground areas and the material to be excavated is not too hard. Below ground operation require construction of the ramp into an excavation bringing the material out of the 917. The slope of the ramp depends on the type of the loader or operated. For example, the collar mounted loader may be dig a more abrupt approach of the, to the excavation. When loading a bank of stockpile, use the V method is shown, or the step loading method shown in figure, figure 919. Position the dump truck at the 30 degree or 45 degree angle from the stockpile addition. When possible, load the dump truck downwind to prevent dirt from dust blowing back into your face. Keep the truck close to the work area and minimize load travel. Keep the work area clean and level. The bucket is loaded, moving the loader forward to the bucket is desired digging level with the engine at full governed speed. The bucket penetrates the material race of the bucket slightly. When the material fills to the top of the spill board, roll the bucket all the way back and the roll, butt position, roll back position is man maintained to prevent slippage while making backing away. Right, the transportation material raises the lift arm to give the bucket same ground clearance as provided with the loader axle. Keep the travel speed reasonable, safe to operation. Upon reach of the reaching the truck, raise the bucket high enough to clear the bu truck body, reduce the forward speed, and dump the loader center over the dump bed. As okay, shows your approach, your thrust and load, and then your back away. Nine twenty one shows loading a dump truck. And then figure 922 shows the bucket position for filling in a bank. Filling from a bank. As shown in 921, shake the bucket with loose dirt within the load dump to back away, lower the bucket carrying position, and return the digging area. Caution. A loader must never be transported in fully raised position. Note, dump trucks should be loaded from the driver's side when possible. When the truck is being loaded, to be sure. The driver either stays in the cab or on the cab protected with trucks, away from the truck loader. When loading of the bank of the keeping the cutting edge, as shown in figure 922, tilt the bucket back to force the flat over the cutting edge against the bank, prevent the bucket from digging, preventing the bucket from digging. The maneuver is non-productive, causes waste of power, time, and positive and Possible damage to the bucket, cylinders, and linkage. When stockpiling material, move each end load only to keep travel distance short when possible. 923 show the bucket position, clearing rocks or other solid um, objects. Locate stockpiles as close to the job site as possible when hindering other work at the job on the job site. When clearing a rocky area, move small and loose rocks first. Large rocks and other solid objects can be loosened and moved easily easier. 924 shows loading large rocks. 925 shows a uh, buck position with a back dragging non-solid material. Skid shovel and then the clam shell. When loosening large rock or other solid objects, greater force and penetration digging under the rock is within the bucket shown in figure 923. Lifting the rock with the bucket while pushing increases the traction when it reduces the track of the wheel spinning. While loading large rocks into the dump trucks, place the load of the dirt and sand in the dump bed materials act. The cushion material helps protect the dump bed from damage. The load of the large rocks into the center of the dump bed from lowest possible height, figure 924. 926 shows the bucket clam shell position for spreading material. Um, 927 bucket clamshell position for loading trees. Note, whenever you extend the tasking with a whole large rocks rip wrap, you should have the dump beds lined with a wooden plank hat with several time loading sand and dirt also protected the bed. When finishing the rack, back digging, back dragging in the non-solid material, push the bucket shown in figure 925 with views A and B. 
Um, back dragging abrasive material causes the premature wear of the bucket. By placing the bucket in the scraper position, open the clamshell slightly. You can spread the material on the run. About amount of spread can be controlled by the size opening of the clamshell shown in Figure 926. When transporting trees or other large objects, allow balance to the load and shown in Figure 927. Figure 928 shows removing buried objects using clamshell by rolling back the bucket. Not to do. Do not roll. B no. Um. Figure nine twenty shot nine shows breaking off objects using a clamshell by back dragging. Balance and load when picking up to prevent. Do not do not do. Um. Prevent twisting and bloom assembly linkage when dumping awkward loads. Dump slowly to reduce the shock weight and transfer the rear axle bucket is emptied. Improper use of the multi-purpose bucket. Equipment operators have grew up in graded techniques to perform a variety of construction operations using loaders to equip the multiple purpose four in one bucket. Figure 930 shows breaking off objects and side loading over the clamshell. Do not, not to do. Um, do not clamp any object only on one side of the object, uh, um, clamshell. However, the techniques of the unnecessary damage multiple purpose form one bucket subject for the conditions they will do they were designed for. Some of the multiple purpose buckets should be not to be used as follows. Do not use the rollback force and the pull stumps and buried objects are from the ground because this may bend the clamshell in that figure nine twenty eight. Do not attempt to break off the buried or anchored objects clamshell back dragging because this may bend the clamshell. Do not attempt to break off buried anchored objects size load, side loading the clamshell, especially open because of uh, this may bend the size of the clamshell figure 930. 932 shows uh, clamping object using the bat using a, as a as a as a battering. Do not do do not grade with the bucket in dump position. Do not clamp uh, objects only one side of the clamshell because of the cause of even stress and may twist the clamshell in alignment figure 921. Do not clamp objects using the battering rams because of the, um, the bending clamshell with the cutting edge figure 932. Do not grade the forward direction of the bucket the dump position because of this can cause damage to the tilt, tilt cylinder and linkage now you're 933. Um, do not use the bottom of the clamshell as p um, pile with the driver because of this will um, bend the clamshell in figure 934. Do not attempt to load the material with a bucket object caught between the clamshell blade because of this could twist the clamshell out of the alignment in figure 935. Figure 934 says using the bottom of the cl cl clamshell as a pile, or drop pile driver do not do. Um, do not attempt to load material with an object caught in the clamshell. Never attempt to pick up objects too large for from the for the clamshell. All right. Do not attempt the object the clamshell objects too large because of this damage to the bucket and linkage. Figure nine twenty six. All right. Backhoe operations. Backhoe attachment shown. Figure nine thirty seven. You have the dig hard materials because of the positive pressure created with the hydraulic system digging depth and limited the length of the boom dipper and stick. The backhoe dump of the material into the trucks hauled the wave and into the piles along the excavation to be used for the backfill material. The dumping range is also limited the length of the boom and dipper stick. The dresser back 515 dri 515 dresser black o attachment couples easily on the front end of the load over the frame using hydraulic control pins quick to disconnect hydraulic fittings. The procedure is setting for the back o attached with the 515 dressers as is follows. Whenever the back o has been coupled to the front of the front end loader, raise the boom arm until it shows the back o attachment. Starting from the dipper stick bucket, cylinder bucket, boom, lift cylinder, um, swinging identification, and swing unit identification, swing unit stabilizer, trench pad, crowded swing control levers, transport lock, and crowded cylinder. All right, 938 back backhoe boom arm pivoting um, shows ground line boom um, boom arm pivot and po boom arm sorry boom arm pivot point ground line 12 inch 12 minimum inch minimum clearance boom arm from the primary mover backhoe operator seat. Figure three, 939 shows the bucket lever, the boom lever, the lever lock hinge, the adjustable rod, the locking tab, the backhoe lever operating operator position. Boom up, up arm points is approximately 20 inches from the ground shown figure 938. Using the bucket level control tilt the back of the mainframe, the top of the mainframe is parallel to the ground. For back operations, place two levers, flu, um, 
Blue and best for the operator to hold position. Play for the lever closed. Do the operator forward position. Move the locking plate in position. Show figure 939. Locking lever in the forward position and two other levers in the hold position. Figure 940 shows the remote hand throttle assembly. The front of the tractor cover the remote throttle assembly and the toolbox support. A loader is equipped with a remote hand throttle assembly, figure 940, located in the front cover of the loader, which is behind the backhoe operator seat. The hand throttle is on the side of the backhoe specification to deliver proper amount of the hydraulic flow over the backhoe operations. The speed engine of the determines the volume of the hydraulic oil delivered to the backhoe sped of the cylinder movements back because of this you should set an engine low speed until you're familiar with the control lever pattern. Note that the backhoe is designed to operate efficiently per, per set gallons per minute of high, low flow of hydraulic fluid. Set the engine throttle and access to the set flow for black oil operator to create excessive hydraulic temperatures pressure that can damage the, um, the hydraulic structural components. Lower the backhoe stabilizer legs to fix the backhoe prep, um, in position. Warm up the backhoe of the hydraulic cylinder system. Extend the retraction of the hydraulic cylinder piston rod several times to circulate the warm oil through the hydraulic system. When the backhoe hose feels warm when touched, the backhoe is ready for operation. Warning before performing maintenance on a backhoe, you must extend the dipper stick fully and set the book backhoe bucket in on stabilizer on the ground. Shut down the engine actuate all control levers back and forth to relieve the hydraulic pressure. Pressure in the system. The loader backhoe. The loader backhoe tractor figure 941 is equipped with a 1.3 cubic yard bucket mounted on the front of the backhoe mounted on the rear. The loader is equipped with a four speed transit sold permanent gear with the B shift to the first and second, third, fourth, back again to third without stopping. The shifting gears always make sure that the engine speed remains in the green area of the tackle meter. The loader, arm, the loader also has a differential lock that gives the equal power to both rear wheels when the machine is stuck or before the loader is operated through a soft, muddy area. When the loader is stuck, the differential lock is actuated as follows. 1. Make sure the rear wheels are not turning. Push 2. Push down the clutch output pedal. Cut out pedal figure 942. 3. Push, push down on the differential lock pedal. 4. Release the clutch cut out pedal. 5. Increase the engine speed. Release the differential lock pedal. Note the differential lock releases automatically when the load is removed. Figure 941 shows the loader back out. Before operating the soft muddy areas, you can actuate the different locks, a differential lock as follows. Before moving the loader through an area that is soft and muddy, make sure the loader is moving in the straight direction that one of the rear wheels is not ro rotating faster than the other rear wheel. Push down the differential lock pedal while the loader is moving from the soft and muddy area. After the loader has removed the, through the area, release the differential lock pedal. Figure 942 shows the transaxle control. One is the four-speed uh, transaxle control. Two is the clutch cl um, clutch pedal, clutch cutout pedal, and three is the differential lock. Note: the engaging the differential lock when the loader is turning is the one rear wheel is rotating faster than the other wheel it can cause damage to the transaxle. When servicing the engine with the loader, lift arms raised with always leave the supported shot. Sh 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 figure 943. The procedure for attaching support struts is as follows. Empty the loader bucket and raise the loader lift the arms to maximum height. Stop the engine. Remove the rear pin from the support strut. Lower the strut onto the cylinder rod. 943 shows the support strut. 944 shows the swing lock pin. 945 shows the using handrail step to climb into the operator seat. The figure 946 shows lower the bucket to raise the front wheels in a few inches above the ground. Figure 947, rotate the operator's seat and increase the engine throttle. Engine throttle. Figure 948, lower the stabilizer raised lo loader. Figure 949, release the boom latch. Figure 950, bucket boom in position for digging operations. Alright, three, install the rear pin with support strut. Four, slowly lift the arms on the support strut. Four, warning, failure to use the support strut when servicing the engine can result in serious injury or death. The loader arms are lowered by accident. Back of operations fouls. Remove the swing lock pin, figure 944. Climb on the loader in the handrail, step figure 945. Rotate the loader bucket in the dump position, lower it to the ground. Lower the bucket until the front wheels are a few inches above the ground. Four, rotate the operator seat with the rear of the loader. Back of operation, increase the engine speed with the full throttle. Figure 947. Lower the stabilizer, raise the level, level of the loader. Figure 948. Two, release the boom latch and push the boom latch control lever in the left and hold it until the boom is released. Figure 499. 949. Extend the boom bucket into start digging operation. Figure 950. 
to dig the back up, move the dipper, stick inward, and fill the bucket. Once the bucket is filled, curl the bucket in figure 951 view B. Swing the boom and dump the material from the bucket in figure 951 C. And return the hit trench and lower the bucket figure 951 D. Figure 948, move the dipper until the full fill of the bucket. Rotate the bucket and dump the bucket. And then uh, return to the trench and lower the, bu and, and lower the bucket. Back up um, bucket adjusting digging positions. Position A for loading trucks. Position um, B for deeper vertical holes. Figure 953, truck track mounted excavator. The back of bucket is can be adjusted to two digging positions. The position loading dumping of the truck should be your 952A UA. The position digging deep vertical holes should be your 952B. The back of can dig more material in the less time with a smooth short dig cycle used. And when the bucket is forced to excavate load with the too large when the dipper stick control lever is pulled back of the bucket is not moving. The hydraulic um Stall results the loader hydraulic system which occurs with the main relief valve hydraulic system makes a noise altering the operator to release the control lever. Note the hydraulic stall causes the temperature of the hydraulic fluid to increase that causes the premature wear to the hydraulic system. Excavators. We're going to pause there. Alright, excavators. Excavators are large backhoes used for heavier construction ta taste tasting. The types of navy con naval construction force are either track mounted or truck carrier. Truck carrier multi mounted multi purpose excavator. All right, and you have your self prepared self propelled wheel mounted excavator. Mounted 954 self propelled wheel mounted 955 excavators are hydraulic powered consists of the restructure revolving unit travel base and the attachment resolving unit. Revolving unit. Revolving unit rests on the resolve of the turntable, normally rectangular steel that carries the engine pumps attachment controls operator's cab. The center of rotation usually forward to the center of revolution. The center of the revolving unit that places the major part of the revolving unit weight at the rear of the surface of the counter base the weight and pull the back of performing excavation operations. The swinging axis is the center of travel unit at the rear edge with the result revolving overhanger to overhanger must be actuated by when revolving unit is rotated side to side to avoid hitting personnel equipment and buildings. The operator's cab is either is mounted to the right or to the left of the boom. It's location control of the gauges, warning lights, and all phases of operation. Some of the unit may have fixed removable front and side windows, roof windows, and the help in watching all out for avoiding wires, tree branches. These windows should be cleaned during the pre-start operations should any time the amount of dust or dirt has accumulated on the window obstructing your vision. All right, your travel unit. The excavator unit tra may, travel unit may be may be track crawler mounted truck mounted self propelled wheel mounted on three or mo most com common mounting is the track um, rack mounted. Track frames are single and double beams welded to the outer frame of the dead axle and the car body. The um, car body's massive front frame includes the turntable, the dead axle, cross member, the transmit, the transmit, the weight of the truck front of track flames. The track may be linked shoe with the construction made with a number of the identical shoe cut drilled in the air end so they can be fastened together by pins. Wedge shaped projections cast an upper four surface of the shoes and provide grip of the drive sprockets to keep the track centered on the idler rollers. Figure 956 says the linking shoe construction. Figure 957 shows the track links on bolt shoes. Um, shows the bushing, the shoe, your regular link, your grocer, your locking nuts, master lock link, plan, plan pin, master pin, snap ring. The other type of track is the roller chain while the bolt bolt and choose the each length of the fastener together with the bushing at one end. The pin goes through the bushing hole with the overlapping ends of the next pair of the links, figure 957. The track is assembled with a hydraulic press able to force slightly oversized pins and bushings into the links of the very seldom work part with the server that the pins turn easily and the bushings provide the necessary hinge action. The problem, the propel, the traction, travel, the tra drive may come in a pair of live axles set across the center of the car body or a pair of ver reversible hydraulic motors fastened in the truck frame. All right, the truck mounted. The revolving unit carried with the turntable to fasten the truck chassis, but the same units that may have an engine mounted on the revolving unit provided with the power over the upper controls engine mounted in the train, uh, sorry, in the truck that you be used for traveling. Some truck mounted units may only have one engine used to power both the revolving unit and the truck. 
Truck mounted excavator can ordinarily swing a full 360 degree rotation, but with the most attachments, it can be working through only 270 degrees because of the interference presented with the cab of the truck front. No, a common rule of thumb is never to swing a perfect performer work with a revolving unit over the cab in front of the in front of the track. Some truck mounted or unit is equipped with the low ridges mode and on the rear of the increased stability of the truck. The outriggers are normally hydraulic actuated control with the cab truck and provide with a much larger, more rigid base over the tires. The advantage of truck mounting over the track with the mounted is capacity for the rapid movement and for one job to another. The boom can be placed easily and the boom rests for the travel then driven down to the road to 25 to 35 miles an hour. This is better than slow, laborious job of trailing, loading, securing, hauling, and unloading a truck or track mounted excavator. The truck mounted excavator suffers from the lack of the maneuverability compared to the track mounting because it requires large area of turning around and sidestep. Additional important weakness is ease with it when it gets struck and consult. Constant care must be exercised to keep away from soft ground during and after rains. Also, tire damage can occur when working in the gar garbage dumps or rock quarry. All right, self-mounted, self-propelled, self-propelled wheel mounted, self-propelled single-engine unit has two range of transmission, able to travel between three and eight, three miles and twenty-eight miles per hour, maneuverable on job, subject for the same limitation truck mounted as Set for the short wheel base, some models and four wheel steering also allows a tighter place. Self propelled wheel model is the front axle oscillation lock lever. The lever are used to lock out the front of the axle oscillating up and down the holding an axle ridge, ridge, rigid and level. The main chassis lock lever is used to help stabilize the excavator when working over the side. Note when reading, make sure the oscillation lock levers are used um, up in the oscillation line and the axle free to oscillate up and down. The self-propelled model has a self out instead of outridge increased stability unit. The outridges are hydraulic actuated and controlled from the cab, provide much larger, more rigid base between the re revolving is in place and work position. The traveling always check for the travel route weight and height and limits with li width limits. Make sure the boom and steering selector are placed in travel position. Swing brake is engaged. Do not travel. Boom over side of the excavator. The traveling over the off the road do not travel faster than five miles per hour. No, after two hours of uh, highway travel, every 50 hours, whichever occurs first, stop the machine to let the tires cool for a half an hour. Heat damages the tires and cause tire failure. Attachments. Hydraulic excavator attachments are made with three strong structural members, such as the boom, the dipper stick, and the bucket. The structural members. Um, are hinged to each other. The boom is hinged to the resolving unit movement. Each hinge is controlled with the two hydraulic cylinders. All right, your boom is normally concave towards the ground. Always space with the butt, um, pull the bullet get closer to the excavator. Perms and permits dig deeper, deeper digging without interference. The travel unit enables the operators to um, see, see past the more easily when raised. The two holes for connecting a boom cylinder rod eyed into the boom, figure eight and nine fifty nine. Top hole for the maximum digging depth, the bottom hole for the maximum dump de uh, height. Be sure to read the operator's manual for instructions on the boom height depth adjustment. The outer edge of the boom is usually prolonged into the two-piece bucket bracket in which the dipper stick is held in the heavy pins or pins. Or your dipper stick is usually one piece, but some of the models of uh, maybe hydraulically extended retract by telescoping and boom. The dipper stick hydraulic crowd crowd cylinder is either connected to the top or on the bottom of the dipper. The bucket and the bucket dump arms are connected to the end. If the dipper stick hydraulic crowd cylinder is mounted on the top, it's again if the cylinder force of the bucket towards the machine known, known as crowding. Retracting the cylinder force of the bucket outward known as extending. When the cylinder is uh, mounted underneath the boom, retract the cylinder crowds of the dipper stick, extend the cylinder, extends the dipper stick. All right, figure 958 shows hydraulic excavator structural members. The boom, the bucket, hydraulic cylinder, the dipper stick, the crowded hydraulic cylinder, the bucket. And shows uh, figure 959 boom height depth adjustment. To one, to increase the de dig depth, two, to increase the dump height. Warning: When working off the when working off the rear of the excavator, to the uh, two heads of the dipper stick hydraulic cylinder mounted on the boom and digging, the caution must be taken to keep the dipper stick hydraulic cylinder far enough from the excavator to allow proper clearance. And swinging the bucket cylinder hinge and hinge to the top of the front side of the dipper, the hinge, cylinder, hydraulic cylinder rods connected to the bucket, uh, bucket dump arms that are hinged to the dipper stick. 
Bucket mounting. The bucket mounting is normally connected to the lower end of the dipper stick by a hinge pin and to triangular shaped pair of drum dump arm, dump arms. The other two angles of the arms are hinged to the buck cylinder right of the dip or and on the dip or stick. Dump arm supply. Required or around curved reach to prevent cylinders from being pulled in against the dipper stick when extending. The alarm the arm is necessary, but because the bucket has such extended arm rotary movement and around the dipper stick hinge for the piston arm could not follow. The hydraulic cylinders extended the bucket teeth move inward in curling digging motion with the hydraulic cylinders retracted bucket opens and extends. Alright, bucket. The bucket can be attached to the bucket mounting in various variety of ways. One way is slow process to remove the counter pins manually driven out the hinge pins to be in the attachment. Another way is quick latch mounting with the pins or to retain the attachment. Quick latch mounting latches on the pin secure the, the attachment to by a large bolt. Third way, the quick disconnect they use the hydraulic controlled locking pins that the operator controls from the cab. The bucket air supplied with a number of the widths and ranges from 4 to 59 inches. The bucket is usually slightly wider than the opening to reduce the friction size of the digging to allow easier dumping narrow buckets tend to keep de- 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 to tend to be deep in proportion and width and may fill um, full fill properly chunky rock digging while wide buckets may have poor penetration digging edge is almost always equipped with teeth they are removable for reversing sharpening or replacement figure 9 960 all right, your naval construction force. There are attachments that are used for the excavator operation. The excavator uh, attachments range from the greater blade, hydraulic power S compactor, prefer- perforated dredge bucket, bull prick, um, bull prick, jackhammer, ripper, and so. Fourth, the attachments are maintained by the attachment custodian in the transportation yard. When they're using attachments, remember these rules. One, always maintain clearance between the attachment cab to prevent equipment damage to the personnel. Two, when not in use, store attachments, hard stand wood to keep the items out of sand, mud, and water. Three, seal the hydraulic lines and fittings to protect from dirt and moisture. All right, your digging procedures is, if you are unfamiliar with the control and basically have not operated a backhoe, and while a slow engine speed, while formalizing, familiarizing yourself in each of the control, first operate the controls, separate them on two more controls at the same time. Basic digging procedures as follows. Wear the pro- pro- proper personnel protective equipment for the job, including steel toe, safety shoes, hard hat, and gloves. Check the ground conditions before you start to dig. Obtain the dig permit known as the location of any underground cables and pipelines. Check the overhead obstructions such as electrical lines, tree limbs, and awnings. Remove with large rock stumps and other obstructions before you begin to dig. When you're digging, digging stroke with a fill will fill the bucket. Full buckets are more efficient than faster and faster than half buckets. Try different digging angles while the bucket and find the best cutting effort with the, for the material you are removing. The best digging angle cuts the material as as if you fill the bucket. When filling the bucket, keep the bottom of the bucket prior parallel to the with the cut as shown in Figure 961 View A. Let the bucket teeth and cutting edge um ground like the knife blade. Figure 961 View B. Curl the bucket to retain cut material as shown in Figure 961 View C. Type of the material excavated will determine how much of it can be excavated in one each cycle. All right, Figure A. Show Figure B. Figure C. Filling the bucket. Job layout. Many excavation jobs are small, routine. Other jobs may, may be quite extensive. On small jobs, that would normally be shown with a dig and two width depth of the most dig. On large jobs, you may be shown a plan of proposed ditches, grade stakes with the projects marked and indicate with what depth and ditches must be excavated. Chapter 15 covers the grade stakes in detail. Note, before starting excavation, you must ensure that the valid digging permit is present and covers the area of the task excava- to be excavated. When arriving to the proper project job site, you may notice two rows of grade stakes, one row of center line with a proposed ditch and the other row offset given the distance from the center line. Do not disturb the offset stakes. They are stakes or will you will follow while excavating the ditch. You will have the information relative to the depth of the excavation written on the side. Figure 962 shows measuring the depth. The depth of the ditch, the measuring stick, the carpenter's level, the board and ground level, and then your st- um, stake. Um, as a guideline, you can string the down, down, drown top with the first center line of stake of the following center line with stakes or distance several hundred feet a, a apart ahead of the machine. The spray paint over the string within the bright colored paint that will mark the ground is excavated. When the bucket center over the first center stake, you will be able to excavate the painted line. If you get, go, get, go uh, off center, you will bring the backhoe back to alignment gradually by steering the machine in the desired direction. Check for grade. Ditch depth. Frequently, you can do this by a straight board or a carpenter's level to 
and a measuring stick and tape along the corner bottom of the horizontal book and the crow cut mar marking over the offset stake place the level on the horizontal board and adjust the board opposite to the stake until the level indicates the board is level measure sure the bottom of the bottom board of the bottom of the disc to show in figure 962 the measurement should be corresponding to the amount of the cut indicated on the stake all stakes will, will be cut stakes you always try to excavate the depth specified on the stakes Note it's better to excavate an, an inch or two below the grade than de, de, not excavate than not excavate depth uh, deep enough. Foundation um, excavation back is used to make excavation basements and the other square from rectangular shape job. They used to extensively digging wide trenches, um, laying water sewer pipe. The, for when back is used to digging square in the regular rectangular shape job, the procedure will um, may vary with the shape of the job restrictions caused by surrounding buildings or special requirements. Disposal of spoil in all cases, starting point and digging sequence must be planned. And back conventionally works itself out into the clear. Improper procedure will not only trap the machine but can lead in a situation where the machine cannot be positioned to complete the job. In this situation, hand digging may be required to complete the excavation. And except the starting digging sequence that can be followed with the excavating small foundation as shown in figure 963, remember the digging time is, in, um, lo uh, is, lo is lost each time the machine must be moved. The digging sequence is planned in a, ma a ma maximum amount of spoil excavated before the machine is moved to the next position. Our figure 963 shows the uh, first cut, second cut, first position stock pile, spoil pile. Um, second, um, spoil pile, second position. And then, um, so you dig and then you back up and then you dig and then you see is a spoil pile, spoil pile, third position. For example, the first cut is to be made with the west line view A, but the starting position machine would be in the west line with the, at the point where the boom and the dipper stick will reach the northwest corner. The machine boom and are lined up with the parallel when it's cutting in line, so the outer edge of the bucket is exactly in line with the cutting line. When the first cut made with the digging ditch along with the cutting line, with the ditch should be dug in the full depth of the grade. The depth of the grade serve the depth of the guide for the other cuts. When the wall, west wall has been dug close to the mouseable machine position, you then swing the boom to the reach the near side of the north cutting line the second is shown figure 963 view a made with a digging trench back for the north wall material cut into the angle formed as about um, between the trenches the two trenches is removed in the layers until the bottom grade is reached no, ensure the desired grade is re reached before removing the back moving the backhoe. The backhoe is backed in the second position shown figure 963 view B. Digging is count continued steps is shown figure 963 view A. Digging this is dug in first until along the west line. The boom is then swung around to cut the angle trench and the materials removed the grade. The digging is continued the manner until the south line is reached. All right, the backhoe is then moved on an excavated portion of the south line, the position found in figure 963, um, view C. And how here the backhoe is positioned with the bucket excavation at the southwest corner to begin with the digging of the south cutting line. Again, after the dish is dug along the cutting line, you should swing the boom toward the center to remove the position as the spoil as the possible with the machine, as much spoil as possible from the machine position. You should continue to move the backhoe around the excavation, repeating the digging steps until all four cutting lines are cut and smooth spoil removed. To make the final cut, remove the material. You may have to position the machine at the edge of the so that the bucket can dig straight. This cannot be done unless the soil type is known and have the good bearing qualities. Cave-ins will result in if the soil will not support the weight of the machine. All right. Um... Before excavating the job site, always consult the project supervisor, crew leader, and ju uh, your, uh, your excavation plans. Keep in mind that in the area that might be placed in spoil material may be able might maybe uh, might be an area for other construction tasks. And excavating at the job site may must be thought thought throughout thorough throw, thought out plan. All right, safety. Safety precautions apply for the operator, front and loaders, backhoes, excavators, as follows. Clear the immediate area of the impersonal destruction before starting the engine. Keep the bucket um, as close to the ground level as possible, transporting loads and grades or slopes. Never operate any control from any position except for the operator seat. Be extra careful with working on banks and hillsides. Always keep the machine in gear when until going down uh, when going down steep um, Grades and never coast or freewheel. Driving speed slow enough to ensure safety and complete control, especially rough terrains. 
Reduce speed when making turns, applying brakes. Always lower the lifting arms and booms to the ground or block securely before any service when moving the machine. Unintended, never dismount, load, or back out excavator when in motion. Never permit anyone to ride on the equipment. Do not lubricate. Do not oil lubricate. Make adjustments when the engine is running or the bucket is raised or unblocked. Never refuel the engine is running. Do not operate. Do not smoke when refueling. Never operate an enclosed area provided with proper ventilation. Do not wear loose fitting clothes. Clothing, which may catch on the moving parts. Always wear a seat belt, steel toe, safety shoes, Howard hat, gloves, and other required personal protective equipment. All right, ditchers. A ditcher, despite its name, is seldom used for the digging ditches, which is slot cut with the earth's slot um, surface for the left open. The ditcher is mechanical excavator used to dig trenches, which is simply cut into the earth and ungrades utilities such as pipelines, conduity, hand wall, handle water, fuel, electrical cable, sewage. Once the material is used, the trencher is covered additional. The ditchers may also be dig used to dig flutters and building foundations. All ditchers have a bucket teeth. Figure 964 show the digger teeth cut and cut the earth and play a major role. When cutting the width of an increase, it will be necessary to increase the width of the file of the crummer. Crummer. This is done by adding one scraper extension place on the side of the crummer corresponding with the side of the bucket line, which is the side cutters have been added. All right. This shows 16, 21, and 20, um, 24. Standard curve tooth bucket line. Um, Pattern for the best results, average hard soil, no, normal digging speed, state of, state of sub teeth shown in bucket, shown in the back. No, note four bucket cycle. All right, your bucket cycle. Every four buckets, um, you do a 16, 21, 24, uh, back to 16 bucket cycle. Bucket line pattern with a full set of digging teeth, you the only where the bucket capacity limiting factor for the best results, loose soil, and fast digging speed. This is the two basic teeth designs. Figure 965 shows your uh, wheel ditcher. Your machine performs um, figure 964 with a two example of the teeth patterns. Normally, you put the teeth wear down about one half inch before the face of the bucket shows wears. Ensure the teeth of the reverse replace. No, always in always install a couple complete teeth, set of teeth on the bucket and when reversing they're replacing the teeth. If only a few new teeth are installed here and there along the bucket line, the new teeth will cut. Most of them wear down much faster than they would in a whole new set. However, if one of the two teeth show too much wear or a broken or chip, they may be reversed or a new ones installed in their place to, in the, if the reset. Um, if the rest of them are in good shape, the the three type of ditchers used in naval naval construction. Um, for, for, Force are the wheel ditcher, ladder ditcher, and chain ditcher. The most common ditcher is the ladder ditcher. Read the operator's manual to obtain detailed information on the care, maintenance, operation of the given to the ditcher. All right, your wheel ditcher. On a wheel ditcher, figure 965, the digging buckets are mounted on a large wheel of wheels attached with the frame type of the horizontal that can be raised with the lower ditcher has a spoil cut and conveyor carrying the excavated material out of the, either of the side of the machine to start with the cut the lower of the turning wheel into the ground. Watch the bucket and steep to start the dig as the ditcher is itself stationary and apply enough pressure to the buckets so they are heaping without gouging the depth and enough to slow the wheel. The ditch will have rounded beginning, uh, beginning is shown figure 966 of view A and B. Be sure the position of the center wheel is over the starting point of war. Full depth ditch, so the ditch is, um, ha has enough room to dig down and desired depth to begin on um, the cut figure 966 view B. Now, before starting excavation, you must ensure the valid digging permit is attained with the covers area and uh, that you are tasked to ditch. Alright, digging. When the wheel is correct depth, you should move the machine forward just enough to keep the bucket re responsibly full, reasonably full. Crowding too hard overworks the engine strain of the digging parts without adding to output. Soft rocks usually respond to the best high wheel speeds but with very slow walking speeds. If the dirt is um, soft, you may crowd it so the dirt is excessive the excessive of the bucket capacity piles on each side of the ditch without damage. Experience will help you select the right, or com right combination of the digging, travel, and spare various types of soles. However, the console the operator's manual for. Alright, 966, so the starting of the cut wheel ditch are A, and then the center, B, desired depth, and then um, for guidance on digging travel speed, the type of the ditch was used. Obstructions. When boulders or heavy roots or pipelines could be met, you should adhere to the following guides. Both walk and wheel speeds should be slow. Soft boulders are cut through the by teeth, depending 
um, by depending on the, how buried and hard bowl, how hard the boulder is, it may be pulled in to the surface of the forest for, forward. This is because the deep, um, deeper boulder is not only held down by a greater weight of the dirt, but also the direction of the tooth contact tends force to forward 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 rather than up. The wheel will usually ride over the embedded boulders um, that cannot be removed of the ditch, or if the large boulder is near the surface of the cut, it must stop the forward motion of the machine, and in this case, the power should be cut off properly. If the boulder is pulled under the surface, it might land in an inconvenient stop forward, the wheel, forward, of the, forward of the wheel in between the tracks. You may have to lift the wheel into the transportation position, work forward until the clear of the rock, and push it in, uh, out of the way back into, uh, until the wheel that can be left lowered in the ditch above boom if the bowler is too large the wheel is to clear the release of the wheel drive clutch so the wheel can turn as it is pulled over all right when the wheel is lifted above the grade to clear any obstruction it may be worked to turn it back to the grade other side the same way the cut is started turn the caution while digging slide turn side slight turns cover the wheel to move sideways to in the trench of the bucket and has long side teeth the side cutting bars the ears soft you can make the gradual turn without damaging the wheel assembly sharp turns may cause severe damage such as bending the wheel frame bending the wheel itself pull, pulling the wheel frame off the vertical track all right, your ladder ditch. So the boom of the ladder ditch for figure 9, 16, and 7 is be brought closer to the figure, um, about figure 35 degrees to vertical. Uh, this shows the ladder ditcher who has a conveyor. With the ladder ditcher, excavating is done with the buckets attached to the bucket on line chain with the chain travel that drives back up with the boom assembly like a wheel ditcher. The wheel ditcher has a spoil conveyor to carry excavated material to one side or the other. The radius curve that depends mainly on the on density of the soil to be excavated. Turns should be made cautiously, slow digging speed only where the boom starts binding between the trench walls. The crumbers crumb, crumb shown in figure 968. Our major job clean out some move the ditchers as after teeth have been cut the material the crummer is adjustable and should be adjusted so they will clean the ditch and loose materials behind the di the teeth. All right, your chain ditch. The chain ditch is shown in figure 969. has teeth attached to the chain saw, similar to chainsaw. The chain teeth that pull the dra drag the cut and cutting of the surface rather than lifting them in the bucket. The cutting are usually moved back and from the edge of the ditching, rotating augers. Chain ditchers are ideally light work for light work such as sprinkler system, gas lines, small water lines. Since some of these um, machines can dig up to 10 inches wide and 4 feet deep. Capabilities limitation ditcher. Ditcher can dig earth material ranging in the texture from soft and hard. However, the material being excavated can increase the hardness production rate with a decrease in table 9-1. Gives the maximum trench rates for the classes of soil in for feet per minute. Limitation. A wheel with a ladder with a chain ditchers and the ramps of the left on the bottom of the trench ends of the round the buried object to aim the flat bottom trench. You may move the ramp, these ramps by hand. The wheel ditch triggers faster than dense material and is preferred for the cross country digging where speed is needed. All right, operating te te techniques is most difficult ditching. Most ditching work keep the machine line and working with the proper depth, unable to achieve the ditch. But um, the bottom you view the uppermost surface of the controls. First, the ditch is surveyed and the depth of the cut is determined. The EA is from the blueprint from the EO established with the uh, like, uh, equipment operator gun line fixed constant distance above the bottom of the gray trench offset with the center line, the trench beyond the track line, and the ditcher. All right, figure um, 968 shows the karma and the ditcher. Sorry, 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 the karma. All right, figure 969 shows the chain ditcher. The guidelines should be used to establish the height and then will be um, put in at least a few inches above the ground at all um, point and stakes of driving along the exact height and depth of the cup and marked with the string line and shreds and along with the take of the markings. Um, a rigid bar is fastened in front front of the power of the um, power of the unit into the ditcher with one end of the string while the ditcher is in line with the ditch. The plumb bob and the other weight is fastened to the bar so it hangs your lucky over the string. The upper can keep the machine on the center of the trench cutting, keeping the plumb plumb job bob just over the string. If the ground is irregular, cover the ditcher to go up and down. The cord hold, holding the plumb bob can be run through the eyes and pulleys so that the upper can reach the end of the cord to raise the lower. It. To the same device, the plumb bob and other weight can be fastened to the side beam, boom, and the wheel. Fixed steel or something fixed length string over the control the depth of the cut and center line and travel the ditcher. Our right, figure 9 one shows the control, um, crawler ditch maximum trench is um, one and a half, uh, dry, 32 feet per minute, um, 2 foot, 25 per minute, per minute, 2 foot and a half, 20 feet per minute, 3 foot, 16 minutes, for, uh, 16, um, 
feet per minute, three and a half foot, 14 feet per minute, five, four foot, 12 um, feet per minute, um, four and a half foot, 11 foot feet per minute, five foot, 10 feet per minute, and then we're going to start, you know, um, I only felt like reading one. All right, cutting curve. The radius of the cur cutting curve cut with exasperating trends for the dish uh, depends mainly on the density of the soil. As we did say, the loosely uh, soil with the radius much less than the hard, compact, rocky soil. The turning of the dish should be made cautiously at slow digging speed, only where the boom starts to binding in between the, between the trench walls. All right, muddy tren mudding trenching. The two major problems with the trenching is muddy material loss of traction build-up material in the bucket. The traction can be increased by putting planking under the tracks and adding wider crawler pads. To cope with the material striking in the teeth of the bucket, you can run the digging chain faster so the material will not be forced into the cut. In this way, they do not force pack wet, sticky material into the bucket between the teeth. Otherwise, the material in the bucket gets stuck and cannot empty completely. Or transporting. A ditcher is slow, must be in hauled between the job sites, and must be loaded unsafely, unloaded safely, properly designed. The ditch requires that it be used in smooth, gradual incline. When lo in loading it in the tilted bed trailer, you must be careful of the sharp incline of the trailer could make the ditcher hang up. Additionally, the smooth tracks on the ditch tend to slip. All right, no, do not load the ditcher on the tilt of the bed of the um, trailer in the damp weather condition. The combination of ditcher design breaks and smooth tracks makes it impossible to stop, um, stop on an incline with loading and unloading. Therefore, it is important to use the proper ramp and loading platform, loading the ditcher for, for safety, loading and unloading the ditcher for lower gear. If you do not have proper ramp, see the crane is used to load the unloading the ditch for safety. The following standard safety precautions of the ditchers. Do not leave the operator seat unless you have to stop the ditcher, disconnect all power the, the, from the engine to the ditcher. Do not engage the clutch to the flat or to the fast. Let it engage gradually to prevent damage of the gear case over the other moving parts. Do not fill the fuel tank with the engine running. Do not let um, bolts and keys come loose. Be alert with unusual sound in order that there are danger signs should be investigated prior to prevent downtime. When the ditcher is secure, the bucket line must always be raised to clear of the trench. Ditches left open must be flagged by the day, flagged by day and properly lighted at night. All right, do not let anyone stand close to the digging boom in the cave. The person might be pulled into the boom and other moving parts. Also, electrical line is hit. People standing nearby could be hurt. Before digging, be sure that you have the digging permit. You should know they have marked all the underground obstructions. Caution, never try to remove any object from the conveyor belt while the conveyor is running. Never raise the boom over the ditch or move the, um, more than you have to while in, on an incline because the ditcher is easily upset. All right, wear the record personal protective equipment such as steel toe, shoes, hard hat, and gloves. Chapter 10, Graders and Scrapers.